Dr Emma Gray and I'm the lead clinical psychologist at the British CBT and Counselling Service and in this video I'm going to share with you a three-step plan to help you to deal with self-harm. Okay so in the last video I talked a little bit more about what self-harm is but basically it's where we cause intentionally cause ourselves harm when we're feeling distressed and this harm in the short term brings about a reduction in those feelings of distress. Now, self-harm is a serious and very complex problem. So it needs a comprehensive plan of attack or solution. So these three steps look at the short term, the medium term and the long term. Okay, let's start with the short term. So in the short term, you need to try and develop an alternative to your self-harm that brings about a similar amount of relief without causing you any physical harm. So this needs to be a sensory experience that's potent enough to distract you from the distress that you're experiencing, but also gives you a sense of control over your experiences. So some of the things that people have used, um, having a freezing cold shower, eating a very hot chilli pepper, going for a run, and I don't mean a gentle jog around the park, I mean running as fast as you can for as long as you can, almost until you collapse, or until you collapse. Um, holding your breath until your lungs feel like they're going to burst, uh, and also people have tried hanging upside down. So you can hang upside down on your bed, let all the blood rush to your head, or if you're a little bit more athletic, you can try a headstand or bending over backwards. And again, you hold it until all of the blood has rushed to your head. Be careful when you get back up because you will feel a little bit dizzy, but that's the point. It's about creating an overwhelming sensory experience which distracts you from your distress. Now, in the short term, none of these strategies are going to be as effective effective as your self-harm in reducing your distress but if you keep practicing them over time they will bring about enough of a reduction in the negative feelings to enable you to resist the urge to harm now this is only the first step so this isn't a solution it's the first step in the solution or of the solution so the second step is your, your kind of your medium term plan. And here you need to work out why you're self-harming. Now, you might already know, but it might not be immediately obvious. You need to work it out so you know what you're dealing with. So self-harm kind of falls into two categories. The first category is to, like I've sort of been alluding to, I guess, to reduce any physical, um, any psychological distress you're feeling, feeling, so anxiety, anger, depression. The second category is where you're using your self-harm to alert the people around you to your need for help in the absence of other ways of doing it. So it's, I guess, the, the traditional cry for help, if you like. Now, if you're falling into that latter category, I've listed some organisations in the description below that you can contact and they will help you to think about other ways of getting your needs met that don't cause you harm. Okay, now if you think that your self-harm is a way of managing distress, we'll move on to look at that. So here, the way to work out why it's happening, if ever we're doing something that we don't like, we need to look at how we're feeling because it's our feelings that determine what we do. And then we look at our thoughts. Our thoughts determine our feelings, our feelings determine our behavior. So the next time you notice an urge to self-harm or you notice you are self-harming, try and work backwards from the behavior. So backwards from the self-harm, how was I feeling just before I noticed this urge or just before I started to harm? So was I feeling anxious? Was I feeling angry? Was I feeling incredibly lonely? And then backwards again, what was I thinking? What were the thoughts that kicked off that feeling? It might be obvious to you straight away, but it might not. And if it's not, just have a guess at it. 
your guess, you're guessing about your feelings and your behaviour, so it's going to be pretty accurate. Quite a common thought that triggers self-harm is I'm feeling very alone, no one cares about me, no one understands me. Okay, once you've got hold of that thought, you then need to look at its accuracy. So you do this by weighing up the evidence that you have to support the thought and the evidence against that thought. So it can be quite helpful to sort of write it down in two columns, columns, evidence for and evidence against. When you've done that and you've kind of worked out whether or not this thought is accurate, because it might be accurate, then look at how helpful this thought is. So the idea here is, if you're trying to escape from the top floor of a burning building, it might be accurate to think, I could die doing this, but it's not a very helpful focus. So check out how helpful that thought is. Once you've done this piece of work, you want to use all the information that you've gathered to develop an alternative thought, an alternative to that thought that triggers your self-harm and write it down. And try and do this after every episode of self-harm. And if you do this over time, these alternative thoughts will start to, I suppose, sit in your mind a little more and help to reduce the distress that you feel before the self-harm and ultimately reduce the urge to self-harm and the self-harm. Now, as you can probably tell, listening to this explanation, it's not straightforward to do this. So give it a go, but you may find that you need a bit of extra support in the form of some sort of therapy or counselling. Okay. The third step, so your longer term plan to tackle yourself harm is to future proof any changes that you manage to make and you do this by working out what it is that's made you vulnerable to self-harm in the first place this is likely to be something that's happened in your past your past experiences that have shaped the way that you think about the world the way that you think about yourself the value you place on yourself what you expect from other people and the way you think about the world in general, is it a fair place, a safe place, these sort of things. And again, this isn't always that straightforward. So you may choose to get a bit of extra support or help in the form of some professional um, therapy or counselling. But quite a good starting point, a self-help starting point, is a book called Reinventing Your Life. And I've put um, the link in the description for this book, but it help, this book helps you to start thinking about how your past experiences have shaped how you think about things now. Okay, so that's the end of this video. If it was helpful, please like, subscribe, and share with your friends. And I'll see you soon.